Facebook over here. Hello Facebook, I hope you can see me and hear me. Very nice to be back with you today. We've got a bit of sunshine down in the West Country. I'm just going to tilt my phone down a wee bit. Um, there we go. Hopefully that is good. Give me a wave on Facebook if you are connected. We're going to have the lovely Amy, of course, my digital editor, who is going to be answering questions and doing all the links on Facebook. Hi, Sarah. So we've got Dr. Sarah Ball in the house. Thank you. Uh, so as I mentioned just now to my friends on Instagram, we are going to be joined in, in a few minutes by Dr. Louise Newsom, aka the menopause doctor. Uh, and I've done lots of podcasts and I've done quite a few of these Instagram lives now with her. And she has really kindly got some of her amazing menopause specialist colleagues to also hop online. So we are we're a crowded house today. It's great. Uh, and I know that, Sarah, you're going to be answering a few questions questions on Instagram live as we go. So as uh, as Louise and I chat, similarly on Facebook, uh, we've got some menopause specialists and qualified GPs and doctors to help answer. And of course, Amy as ever will put up links to things. So we're going to uh, crack on. I'm just going to load up my, um, my questions here because Amy sends me, as you know, a little um, spreadsheet thing on my iPad so that I can read questions in real time which works really well and today we're going to be talking quite a bit about skin and I just wanted to share a couple of things uh, from my perspective before we get going talking about hormones and I think one of the things obviously I've been involved in skin <laughs> for more years than I care to remember I don't know how long 35 years I've been writing about beauty and skin and I started life as a beauty editor, you know, long before anything else and then went on to write books. My first books were about oils for the skin and I've written about 36 books, I think, in total. Um, most of them quite small, but some of them bigger, including a book that's just called Skin. It's all about skin. And obviously went off, uh, did lots of daytime TV with Richard and Judy, did the first ever programme on skincare and beauty called Beauty Wise for the BBC. That came from Pebble Mill. Gosh nearly 30 years ago. I think I was pregnant actually with my eldest boy who is now 26. So um, is he 26? No, is he 27? Oh gosh, I lose track of time. Don't ask me complicated questions. Anyway, he's in his late 20s. I hope he's not watching. And yeah, so doing a lot about skin always. And then the beauty company came along, um, which Kim and I started, which I have no connection to any longer. We sold it back in 2010. So although that's not um, always obvious or clear, but I don't have any connection with them at all. But obviously I'm very proud of all the skincare that I created and I'm still very much involved with writing about skin on my wellbeing website. I write about skin and skincare. And one of the, the things that I often link with skin is gut health. So when I wrote this, which is the Good Gut Guide, a lot of that was looking at inflammation in the gut and how that affects our skin, particularly for inflammatory skin conditions like rosacea and psoriasis. And drinking things like kefir can be really helpful. Um, and just doing simple, simple, easy things. So a couple of quick things before we get on to the hormone side of things. You may have seen a few watching me yesterday. I launched the Wellbeing Shop Box. Uh, this is the organic juices and plant milks, um, which are made by the Healthy Juice Company. And I have to say, this one, because I was having a bit of a wobble yesterday. And this is the almond chia, the cinnamon almond chia. And oh my goodness, this is good. This has been my go-to. Mm. So I just wanted to have that with me to sip, that lovely cinnamon um, spice, if you love cinnamon, then you'll absolutely love that. And of course, that's got a very interesting um, antiviral history behind cinnamon. And very low in sugars, because of course, keeping sugars low is really important, not only for menopausal and perimenopausal issues, but also for inflammation. And the other thing which I thought I'd share, which is just a bit of fun, if you watched me, I think the day before yesterday, I made a homemade face scrub and this was lots of honey real natural honey which I talk about a lot oatmeal or wheat germ actually which I've used here you could use either a little bit of lemon and ground almonds and I used this on my skin and it was really tingly and bright but then do you know what I did I needed a bit of sweetness for comfort eating mm. so I've actually started to eat the leftovers <laughs> it's really nice <laughs> a bit like a kind of healthy halva is it that you get in the in the Middle East those kind of really sweet um, little pastries. This obviously doesn't have pastry in it, but it's got wheat germ 
and it's got ground almonds and lemon and honey. Anyway, it's really nice. So if you've got any left over, have them take, don't throw it away. Have a spoonful of it. Right, I am now hoping to be joined by the wonderful Louise Newson. There she is, waiting for menopause doctor. This is very exciting because we've got lots of questions. And I know it's a very exciting day for Dr. Louise, actually, because she's got news too, which she's going to share with us, hopefully, in just a moment. It says it is connecting. So let's wait. Hi. Hello, hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Sorry to keep you waiting. How are you? That's right. It's okay. I'm very well. Thank you very much. Now, this is a, this is a big day for you. Tell us your news. What's happening at five o'clock? research that we're doing together in conjunction with NHS England about the whole role of oestrogen and immunity and how it appears to be protecting some women from COVID. Um, so he has got the app, um, which I hope that you have downloaded on your phone. I do, definitely. Which is the, yeah, so it's the COVID-19 symptom um, app that he's done um, in conjunction with a company called Zoe. And they have three million people worldwide who are tracking mm. every day. As you know, you go on and you put your symptoms. And even if you feel well, it's really important to tell them that you feel well. Um, and he's been collecting some really interesting data. So I've been persuading him, and he has finally relented, to include questions about periods, about whether someone's taking HRT or whether they're not having periods. Um, so we can um, hopefully very quickly have a massive amount of data that him and his really wow. clever team can analyse. So hopefully in the next week or two we'll be able to say um, more about um, whether oestrogen has an effect because we know that oestrogen has a really important effect on our health. We yeah. know it's really good, as you know, to protect against heart disease, against um osteoporosis against dementia um, even against obesity and we know um, that obesity can lead to other conditions and a lot of uh, people now are thinking that um, a lot of these conditions are related to a low grade inflammation so it's a bit strange because we need inflammation and we need our white cells to fight disease and fight infection and reduce yeah. inflammation but if the balance is wrong these cells can produce dangerous chemicals in our body and make things worse um, so it's very complicated immunology and yeah. um, but we know that there are estrogen receptors on these cells that affect our immunity um, and oh. so we know for example women are more likely to get autoimmune diseases um, and actually men are more likely to get worse viruses so this whole man flu is probably true um, it's it's man for a real thing. That's the worst thing about what I'm doing, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, so when we both get the same virus, yeah. um, and we just carry on working and, you know, rule the world as women tend to do, and men are, are really ill in bed, well, that's because their immunity is quite different. So the way they fight infections is quite different as well. That's fascinating. So oestrogen, bottom line is helping with our immune system. It's well, we helping. think so. Yeah, it, we know it does help with our immune system generally. Yeah. But what I want to know is, and obviously lots of other people want to know, is is it making a difference? Because we know that there's a female-male difference in mortality, but also morbidity from COVID. So we know that a lot more people who, are, who have gone to intensive care and have sadly died have been men. We know that worldwide. Yeah. But we've also, um, I've managed to find a very interesting study from Wuhan, which shows that they've done um, estrogen levels in women who've had COVID and um, low levels have been associated with worse disease. So that wow. doesn't mean it's caused it, but it's an interesting thing. Um, oh my so, goodness, this yeah. is going to be fascinating. So at five o'clock, you are doing a webinar with Professor Tim Spector. Yes. And so there's a link on your Instagram or on your yeah, Facebook. Yeah, there's a link on the Instagram and there's a link on his Instagram. Um, he yeah. does a weekly sort of research update. Uh, so we're doing that together tonight, but it will be recorded. So That's really exciting. So, oh, my goodness. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be tuning in. It, you know, the, the longer I talk to you and read all the journals and read all the papers and the clinical you know, trials and all of that, the more... The clearer it is that the benefits of oestrogen for women are just legion, yeah. untold. Yeah. It seems to affect just about everything, and it's even stretching well, it, now into COVID. Yeah, 
I know. And, it, and it's very interesting. So I've obviously, all I think about and talk about is the menopause, much to my family's annoyance. And when the figures first started coming out, I was saying it must be, re- it must be related to hormones. It must be related. And my family had just been telling me to be quiet. But actually, you know, it is interesting. But then if you look at every single cell, I can't think of a cell in our body that doesn't respond to estrogen. Mm. And so when you look at disease processes, you know, without estrogen, as you know, we can't make it. We can't eat enough to make it, no. to stimulate our cells. So no. it's, um, you know, and, and also if you look back in time, in the in the, in the Victorian times, the average age of the menopause was slightly older, but then we used to die a year or two afterwards. Our yeah. average life expectancy was late 50s. So, mm. you know, I was just actually doing my clinic. I've been this is in between patients. Obviously, I'm seeing you now, but the last lady I was just talking to said, I, I've been fighting against um, having HRT because it's um, I don't want anything unnatural and the reason I was going to ask was, you this very question I yes. have a question here that ah, just great. says I want to do it naturally so I yes. don't want HRT so what did you say to your patient because this is the same well, actually, answer it, it, yeah so it's not it's not natural to not have hormones so it's a bit like if you yeah. had um, if you had an underactive thyroid gland or you had your thyroid gland removed well, then you might survive with an underactive thyroid or without having thyroxin in your body, but it's not very natural. You want to replace it. Yes. Um, so that's all we're doing with hormones, as you know. And and it was interesting because this patient I just saw, the only reason that she's thinking about HRT is because she listened to a podcast with you talking about HRT. And she said, oh, if Liz can do it, then I think <laughs> I might. But she'd suffered for 10 years. And it's just such a shocker. Also- this lack of information, it... Just drives yeah. me crazy. And I get this particularly because, you know, I was talking before um, you joined me here about my background and creating skincare and always being involved with naturals, always writing about natural plant oils and herbs, you know, which I'm a fervent believer on. You know, I, I really do. I, I live very botanically. But HRT, modern HRT, comes from a plant. It's the wild It does. Yarn. And I think this is where the confusion is. And yeah. in fact, even, even um, this lady and a lot of my patients say, well, I, I've taken the contraceptive pill. I don't want it. I don't want to take it. It didn't suit me. But as you know, the contraceptive pill, which has revolutionized women over the world, sure. over decades, as you know, is synthetic. It, yes. It's not natural. No. I mean, okay, HRT isn't natural because it's 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 synthesized it's made in a it comes from a plant so is everything else but it comes from the yams the root vegetables it's the same molecular structure as what we produce ourselves and we only need to look in our gardens or go for a walk and half the plants we walk past and weeds we don't want to eat they're all natural yes we wouldn't want them so we have to think about what natural is and then the other thing is we have to think about why we're taking hrt so are we taking it for our symptoms are we taking it for our future health and so this is where we need to i think rebrand menopause so we're thinking of it as a long-term hormone deficiency rather than something that we have to endure and get through and battle through to the other side which is what we hear and i'm sure you hear a lot And, and then you know, women feel it's really hard, as you know, for a lot of women, the symptoms can really affect them. And a lot of women don't realise what their symptoms are because we all talk about hot flushes and sweats, but it's the low self-esteem, yeah. it's the less the sort of feel of lack of self-worth, this sort of joyless feeling flat, you it's know. Flat it's flat feeling, and, and yeah. I think that's very dangerous now, isn't it? Because we're all still locked in and we're beginning to feel, you know, I had a, I had a wobble yesterday. Yeah. And, you know, without the support of, you know, good hormones and good nutrition, it would be oh, very I mean, easy to spiral, spiral I down. I mean, I, I woke up, I won't even tell you how early it was this morning, um, uh, probably before the birds. And um, I've obviously got a lot on my mind, but I, I, I thought, well, do you know what, I'd get up, I, I read a few articles um, to try and stimulate my brain about all this work with immunology. And then I went down and I did my yoga practice and I could open the door and I could hear the birds. And, mm. you know, I feel physically very strong and mentally strong. But mm. I was as I was doing my practice, I was thinking three years ago, I really struggled. I had joint stiffness. I had muscle aches. I was tired. I was irritable. I was often waking up at three, four in the morning because Same. I couldn't get back to sleep. Um, and now I hardly ever wake up in the night. And and my muscles are fine. My joints. All these symptoms that I had no idea were related to my low hormone levels. Um, 
Yeah. And so, you know, lockdown is horrid, isn't it? We've all had enough of it. But actually, you know, when you're struggling with your mental health as well, whether it's related to your menopause, perimenopause, depression, mm. anxiety, whatever, it, it's really yeah. takes a toll, doesn't it? Now, Donnie, we're supposed to be talking about skin. I know menopause is such a massive subject. You, I know, had a very interesting podcast with a dermatologist recently. What's the link here between menopause and skin? And yeah, well, is, it's, is, it's is, really is it controlling our skin changes? Changing? Yeah, it's absolutely so. So like I said to you, estrogen gets all around every single cell, but it also affects our skin cells. And um, I did a recorded an Instagram live with him, if anyone wants to flick over and I'll upload mm. it to my website. But And we've got podcasts as well. But skin, um, the structure of the skin is really important. So collagen, as everyone talks about collagen, it's the building protein for our skin. Um gets reduced without estrogen and also moisture loss increases so the skin is a live organ it's our heaviest organ in our body and oh. it protects all the organs our internal organs and structures but it's also very dynamic it needs a good a blood supply to it to provide the nutrients and take away any waste products from all the cell processes that are occurring so a lot of women find their skin becomes dry it becomes itchy yeah. it becomes a bit more leathery a lot of people find that their skin sort of lacks the radiance that it used to used to have and people find that they get more lines more wrinkles and um, it's more elastic because they haven't got this collagen and then also as you know there's an increased bone turnover so for example if you look at the face often the jaw um, shrinks and then the skin is wow. becoming less elastic so people sort of have more loose skin around also, their face as, as our bones well. kind of degrade over yeah. time through losing estrogen that's yes. going to affect the structure of our face yeah absolutely and, and you can I mean I'm sure you can you can often see from women's pictures yeah. who's on HRT or not and it's often because yeah. having the um hormones back actually will help stimulate the blood supply to the skin it will help reduce moisture loss so the skin becomes less mm. dry it will help rebuild the collagen and it will also obviously help stabilize the bone loss as well and actually build bone too so there's lots of processes that are going on that we need our hormones for yeah um, and around 40 percent of women have symptoms such as dryness um, and mm. and irritation of their skin so it can be very common sometimes it's just in one area but as you know the nerve supply to the skin is affected because all our nerves respond to estrogen as well so a lot of people find they get very itchy skin yeah um, and it's because the nerves also can get quite confused you know so they don't respond in the same way mm -hmm. so some people get this um, condition called formication where it's like spiders running under the skin no. Um, and it's a horrible, horrible feeling. And they go to their doctors and the doctor says, well, you haven't got a rash, you haven't got anything wrong, it's nothing. And, and it's related to low estrogen. So it can really have a huge effect. And then some people find conditions such as acne or rosacea that they've had mm. maybe when they were younger flare up. And again, yeah. that's because of the imbalance in hormones. Interesting. What about um, changes? I mean, if you've got acne or had acne in the past... <laughs> Is taking HRT going to potentially flare that up again? That's another question that's come up. Yeah, no, it often improves. So, does it? Um, it yeah, it, it often does. Um, now, some people, as you know, um, we have estrogen, our main hormone, but we also have testosterone, which is produced by our ovaries, and that level declines as well. But sometimes the balance obviously changes. So some people find they relatively have more testosterone than estrogen, even though they're both low. And so some people find their skin becomes more greasy, the more prone yeah. to acne, um, like they were often as a teenager. So actually giving the estrogen obviously changes the balance and even then sometimes those women that have testosterone it can actually improve as well because they're resetting that balance really? um, so yeah um, and then some skin conditions such as eczema um psoriasis they can all flare up as well during the perimenopause yeah. and menopause. getting a lot of questions coming in about magnesium and its role here and i know that magnesium um i've got one of your supplements actually that contains magnesium yeah. which i think is excellent does that have a role to play in skin, particularly, or is that some, something that is generally um, good for, for I mean, magnesium, again, is something that hasn't been really 
as well researched as it should um, mm. and there are different types of magnesium so a lot of people just take a single supplement which contains magnesium citrate but there are other types of magnesium as well but it does affect cells so it can affect our skin a lot of women take it and men for the sleep anxiety it can yeah. actually boost immunity as well so um, there are different roles and a lot of people as you know um, from your wonderful podcast about migraine is that it can be very beneficial for migraine absolutely that, that's how i that's how i and, and, and lily yeah. takes quite a high dose of magnesium citrate mm. um but i'm not you know I'm, I'm not sure whether there are other forms of magnesium that are better perhaps for sleep i think there are they, they all work in slightly different ways, don't they? They all work slightly different. And the thing is, you can't do a magnesium blood test because it's intracellular in the cells. So oh, what really? your blood test can be, so there's lots of people that have these private blood tests that can be very expensive and actually yeah. won't help um, knowing whether you need magnesium or not. And it's a supplement that often people do take and, and benefit from it. Yes. Very, very interesting. Um, we've talked a lot about, obviously, oestrogen and HRT and dryness I, I guess kind of one of the elephants in the room that we don't often talk so much about is dryness in other parts of the body like vaginal dryness yes um, and we and should talk about it we should you know, talk about it very but... common and um, <laughs> vaginal dryness affects it's so shocking about 70 to 80 percent of women who are menopausal yet we also know about seven percent of women receive treatment so this is really sad and really shocking and I'm actually going to do an Instagram live thanks to you for persuading me to do these Instagram <laughs> lives Liz. I'm going to do one on Sunday about vaginal dryness and right. urinary tract infections because we talk about the skin and the vagina and the vulva are a type of skin so all these yeah. changes that I've said you can imagine they occur the vulva is obviously the more the, basically speaking the external part and the vagina is inside but as you can imagine the vagina is designed to be elastic to stretch um, yeah. so obviously sex is important but even walking or running yeah. or sitting down or riding a bike the vagina has to be able to move and the, the vulva has to be soft and cushion that area yeah. so you can imagine if it's if it's thinner there's less blood supply it's more irritated it's drier you can understand why you have all these changes mm. um yet they're not spoken about and yes. because we've got estrogen receptors around the area we've also got them in our pelvic floor but mm -hmm. we've also got them in our bladder and our urethra which drains the, the bladder um so without estrogen you can imagine a lot of women have urinary symptoms you know coughing yep. sneezing um the pelvic floor is not so strong um and so a lot of women find that taking HRT obviously can improve, but um, also using localised oestrogen, such as little oestrogen, um, there's little tablets that people can use. It's is that Vagifem? Vagifem is, is a common one. Mm -hmm. We've got some others as well that have recently come to the market. But um, even people that have had an oestrogen receptor positive breast cancer who wouldn't take HRT in the first instance can still use these products. Yeah. Um, but a lot of doctors don't realise, and if you remember last week we were talking about all these warnings oh. in the Vagifem packet there's a warning to say risk of breast cancer risk of stroke it's rubbish because it's a very very low dose and it only works locally and so even mm. um cancer specialists still agree that we are allowed to prescribe them for these reasons for women who yeah. couldn't take hrt because so there, there's a question here actually that's come in from instagram um lisa she says I keep getting UTIs, so urinary tract infections, and they're making me feel really unwell. I've been given antibiotics by my GP. I've also suffered with vaginal problems too. I've been taking HRT since January, hoping this will help. Is there anything you can suggest to help yeah, so keep me getting from them? Certainly, vaginal estrogen is, would yeah. be very good for her. And around so you can take fish, both. So, so if you're using yeah, the gel so or the tablet. Absolutely. And, and a, lot of, a lot of, sadly, a lot of healthcare professionals don't realise this, but a, a fifth of women who take HRT will still develop symptoms related to vaginal dryness or right. um, recurrent urinary tract infections. Yeah. And we know there's some evidence that um, estrogen actually stops the um, any bugs that are around, and we've all got bugs around our vaginas, um, the bugs actually getting in and causing an infection. Um, That's so fascinating. So it's, it's really important. And you know what, Liz, I was reading one of my husband's journals because obviously I've got nothing else to do. So um, tell us about your husband because you, you are a pair of yeah. medics, aren't you? Uh, yeah, so he's a urologist. 
So, You're um, a great combination, aren't you? You're going on about vaginal dryness, and he's a urologist looking at willies all day. I mean, yeah, you I can't mean, make he, it up, really, can you? No, I know. I know, my poor children. <laughs> so he's a penile reconstructive surgeon, so he does a lot of absolutely amazing surgery, especially for soldiers who've had blast injuries and all sorts. But oh. I was reading one of his journals, and it was all about recurrent urinary tract infections in women. And there was a little bit about this much about um, urinary tract infections and menopause. And there was this much about HRT. And okay, so for those of you who, who, who can't see on Facebook, so oh, how, okay. how, how, much, how, how, how much for women? A lot for women. Not much. So there was, it was a fine <laughs> so a, a lot for men and a teeny, weeny, weeny bit for women. Yeah. And, and oh. the bit about uh, HRT just said there's a risk of breast cancer and risk of clot, so it shouldn't be used. They, um, so I have written to the um, author and sent him some articles because it, this is the sort of information that my husband as a surgeon is getting. And, you know, he saw someone in his clinic yesterday who's had recurrent urinary tract infections and he said, to her do you have any vaginal dryness and she looked really shocked because this is a man asking in a urology sure. clinic and she said yes I do I haven't had sex for two years it's really painful for my husband and the husband was sitting with her wow. and he said oh you you actually need some HRT you need some vagifan this would really make a difference and she you know was very emotional and she was expecting she was going to have to need a cystoscopy and you know to look into the bladder more she's had loads of antibiotics and you know Paul my husband was saying oh, I feel really proud that I've done something yeah. you know and um it's very easy it's very low risk and obviously if a woman's urinary symptoms don't improve then they can have the tests the investigations but sure. actually if a lot of women out there who were having recurrent urinary tract infections like me I held my hand up that that was me and yeah. I didn't realize I had lots of antibiotics and, you know, I managed to help with gut health. I used to take Ramnostra's probiotics, and that was certainly helpful. But I would still, you know, be on the edge, be on the verge. Yeah. Um, and then and the HRT the way, really helped. Yeah. And, and then for me, yeah. adding in the, um, the Vagifem has just been the, the final little yes. piece. Yes. And if you, look at the dose, if you look at the dose of Vagifem, it's 10 micrograms. Yeah. And if you look at the dose of the smallest HRT estrogen tablet, it's one milligram. Oh, wow. So that means it's 100 times more. So yes. it means you can use Vagifem twice a week, yeah. and the dose is the same as one tablet. And so it stays in place, doesn't it? It stays within the pelvic area. it's only working locally. Yeah. Um, and it can be used long term. So there's a lot of doctors that think it can only be given for a short period of time and then stop. Yeah. But you need it there forever because like like anything if you stop all that will go back um so right. it's not a it's not a restorative treatment that you just take a course of you have to keep on with it but i guess that's a bit like any hormone isn't it because it doesn't build up in the body it's Absolutely. like if you're a diabetic you have to have your insulin all the time or your yeah. thyroxin all the time Exactly right, and this is exactly the same. So, um, and it's really important that people realise it because certainly, if people are worried about using any of these treatments or trying HRT, they often feel reassured that they're not staying in the body. So, if they change their mind, they stop, and then they can, the, you know, the, the next day it's, it's good. A few yeah. questions about Vagifem here: Is it a cream or a tablet? It's a little tiny pellet. Um, yes, yeah, so, um, so it comes with a blue applicator, um, yeah. and then it's got a tiny little tablet at the end. And you have to have it on prescription, do you? You can't go and get it from the yes, chemist. Yes, you do. Yeah, there, there is a move to get it over the counter because it's so safe. So safe, and I think yeah. in Finland it is. Um, but, you know, we're allowed Viagra over the counter, aren't we? So <laughs> one day it will come. One day they'll listen to women. <laughs> oh, one day. Oh, I, honestly, I could talk to you all day. We are so grateful to you for being here today. I know it's a super busy day today. You've got, you're doing the no, normal clinic. You. You've got yeah. your webinar at five o'clock with Professor Tim yeah. Spector, all about COVID and oestrogen, which is just going to be so super fascinating. And then yeah. on Sunday, you've got your own Instagram Live, Facebook Live, particularly talking about vaginal dryness. Yes, yeah, so that's issues. all I'm going to be talking about. And um, I can see that Zoe um, Hudson, who's from Manchester, is answering some of the questions Thank here. You. And she's going to be answering, and also Sarah Ball, who you know. And, and just tell me, that there's, there's a really serious condition um, that's often misdiagnosed that I expect you'll talk about on Sunday called lichen something like other. Lichen sclerosis, yes. Because um, um, I, I, I get lots of questions about that, and obviously I'm not a doctor, so I can't yeah, answer them. But sorry, is that the kind of thing? 
yeah, and it's very hard at the moment because obviously people can't be examined. You know, we're doing these remote consultations and not many of us would want to show your vulva and vagina to a doctor through, you know, through the camera. Um, but actually, it's very safe even to use localised oestrogen if someone does have lichen sclerosis and there is a bit of work to show that it will improve. Okay. Um, but so what we normally do, if we're going to give treatment, we don't always have to examine a person. So we often give treatment and if it doesn't improve or there's skin changes in that area, then after about three months, then they need to be examined. Right. So women who are listening here, we think they want to try some Badgerfem or some oestrogen cream who can't see in face-to-face a doctor, they could still speak to their GP or sometimes it's the nurse at the surgery yeah. and ask for something like Badgerfem and it's very safe to do that. Fantastic. Bless your heart for being with us. So many comments of, of praise and thanks for you and your work. So thank you. Oh, thank Good you. luck well, at five o'clock. <laughs> You will honestly, you will rock it. You will just be. You will knock it out the park. I have no doubt about well, that. Well, I did. So. I did um, a pathology and immunology degree, but it was in 1992, and I'm trying to pick my husband's brains, and he said, "I can't remember that long ago." Don't overthink <laughs> it. You are so talented and clever. You'll be fine. Send so, you well, lots thank of love. You. Thank right, you. Keep safe. You All too. Right, bye bye. Bye. Oh, great. Gosh, don't we love Louise? Lots and lots of hearts for Louise. I hope everybody on Facebook could hear. Lots of great information. Um, and as always, so little information, unfortunately, accurate information for our poor GPs. And, you know, a big shout out to our GPs and practice nurses who are operating under such difficult conditions. And we are so grateful to everybody out there. And it's just a shocker that they don't get the good information that they need. But I tell you, the minute these doors are sprung open and I'm released from lockdown, I did joke before that I'm going to be chaining myself to some railings up in Parliament Square and um, that day may yet come because there's an awful lot that we still need to do. So meantime, now is a really good time to read up on it all, listen to my podcasts, check out Dr. Louise's work. Huge thank you to all the GPs who've been commenting on Facebook. Really so, so grateful. It's helping a lot of women. And I know the great thing about social media is that we can share it. And I always say, you know, when you find the good news, when you discover something, please don't keep it to yourself. Please share it far and wide, because I think this is a kind of a grassroots movement. And it's not something where we get the information from the top and it filters down. No, we need to go out and get it. We need to be talking to these great brains and then we need to be sharing it and growing it from the ground up. So I shall leave you with that thought today. Um, this hopefully will be landing on your doormat if you are a subscriber. It's the brand new issue and never been a better time to subscribe because we're holding the price with a 30%, 30% um, subscription deal with free UK PMB because we know that loads of you can't actually get out to the shops to get it. So I hope that's helpful. I'm going to be back here tomorrow, same time, same place, with some lovely floral chat. Yes, I've decided to keep it Floral Friday. So I'm going to be joined by Simon Lysett and we're going to be talking mood boosting flowers. We've got some lovely, lovely things planned. So I do hope that you'll join me. And in the meantime, take care. Thanks so much for all your hearts, for your messages of support, your virtual hugs. I did a little post on Instagram this morning about virtual hugs and I'm sending you a big one right now to everybody. So take good care of yourselves. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.